Welcome back to the DFS Sweatshop. I am your host, the DFS Jerusalem, and you can follow me, of course, on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. Today, we're going to be talking about a lot of what happened last night. Uh, going to be breaking down the slate. Uh, you know, just just taking a look at you know what what happened throughout the slate because it was a very 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 good one, man. It wasn't a night where all the chalk went off. It was a night to sort of be contrarian, and I did that in a lot of spots. As you know, I am a tournament player. That's what I like to do. I'm a tournament player. I love uh, to be contrarian, and I, and I was able to do that in, in a couple of spots today, which which kind of saved my night. So uh, every day, I send out a tweet. As you know, every day I send out a tweet. Okay. Uh, yeah, good. Kevin Vu. Quick question from him. Really good. How did? Pittsburgh scored 12 runs and Josh Bell didn't do nothing. That shit killed me. That shit killed me. But every day I send this tweet out and it says, "Who's tonight's gang gang stack of the night?" Right? Like, what what batter stack are you going to use? Because you know I'm one of the good guys. I tell you that stacking uh, batters is the way to get to the cash line. I don't give a fuck what nobody tell you. If people sit there and break it down position by position and try to oh first base, second base, blah blah, they're they're steering you wrong. This is not a position by position game. Basketball. You can go position by position in some spots. Uh, football, you've got to go position by position. But in baseball, this is not a position by position game because guess what? No matter if you're a catcher, a first baseman, an outfielder, no matter what you are, an infielder, no matter what you are, you still accrue points the same way everybody else does. It's all about the batting order. That's why you know a lot of times they'll come up and, and, and the night before the slate, they'll tape a show and talk about position by position and all that shit. It, 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 makes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make difference. Because until you know for sure what the batting order is going to be, it doesn't matter uh, uh, who you talk about as far as batting. That's why in tonight's show, in today's show, uh, before the batting lineups have come out, we like to talk about pitching and take a look at some BVP stats. That's what we're going to be doing, man. I've got a few applications that are opened up. Of course, what you see in front of you is my Twitter. Go follow me on Twitter. I've got uh, Fangraphs, very solid place for all of your MLB information. Very good place there. Uh, we've got... Uh, Swish Analytics, a really solid spot uh, for BVP information, as well as uh, RotoQL, man. Shout out to RotoQL. They do a very great job. They do have optimization software, stuff that you can use uh, to really build those lineups. Uh, but we don't use all of that because on the, on YouTube or on my site because that's a paid service. All I, all I do is show a template of RotoQL and uh, just to get – because I like the way that they format the games for each, each, each game for the slate. I like the way they format it. It's easy for me to run through those and look at them and talk about it. Okay? Exactly. Baseball, base, baseball position by position is a surefire way to zero money. That's coming from Brad Himes here, the big homie. So we know what's going on, man. We're not stupid. They can't fool us anymore. They can't because you got me. As long as you got me, I'm not going to let nobody fool you. I'm just not. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, some of my lineups for the night. And see, what I like to do is I don't want to just talk about, oh, I'm playing this, I'm playing that. I'm playing this guy. I'm playing that guy. Blah, blah, blah. I, if I tell you I'm playing people, I'm going to show you that these are the people that I'm playing. Okay? So uh, probably, as you can see, the guy that I was highest on uh, from a pitching standpoint on the slate is going to be Tyler Chatwood. He's going to be a little bit of everywhere. I think I made, what, six laps? One, two, three, uh, four, five, six. Yeah, I ran out six lines. This is from, this is from the early. And the early were pretty, pretty good, too. No, this is from yesterday. That went pretty good, too. My early did, too. So I ran out six lines today. And all these lines were based around uh, certain stacks, okay? Uh, this one, as you can see, 118.5. This lineup did cash. It had uh, uh, Chatwood and Sale. This was my... Uh, this... Yeah, this was my uh, my St. Louis Cardinals stack, which ended up cashing. It was pretty decent, okay? Uh, this lineup right here, I had some Yankees in this one. I had some Yankees in this one. This one was uh, the San Francisco stack, which did not do very well. Uh, I think Chris Sale being in these lineups kind of fucked me over. I, really, I think that's the case. This one was the Pittsburgh stack, which was my very best lineup. And this one really pissed me off because I got a zero from Josh Bell. I got a zero from Gene Segura. I got nine from Charlie Blackman and four from Bryce Harper. This right here, this lineup here should have took me to the money. This lineup, this lineup right here. I should have I should have taken down a GDP. I 
I should have taken down a GPP with this lineup. This lineup right here should have taken down a GPP without question. This is like my best lineup. Uh, it scored 162, won all of my money back, and then some from all of these other lineups. So what I was able to do was use this one lineup to pay for all of these. And, and I'm going to have nights where it all goes well and all of those lineups cash. Like I'm going to have those nights. I've had them in the past. I've had those in the past. All right. Uh, these are some of the lower scoring ones. This is a San Francisco, uh, excuse me, a San Diego stack that we went with. I uh, had a lot of San Diego guys in this one. This one was the Seattle, the Seattle stack. I, I kind of went against the grain, man. I'm, I, I play contrarian when I play tournaments. I really do. You know, I didn't have any exposure to the uh, to uh, the Washington National stack, which really wasn't the greatest scoring uh, game on the slate. It wasn't. It, it, it was it was Pittsburgh, which was my best lineup. My best lineup was Pittsburgh because they freeze Harrison and Frazier did it in this spot. And if those other studs would have done anything, I would have been in a much better position. So that's uh, the overall scape of what I did last night. And this uh, it ended up, I want to say, I, what I had invested, I think I had like 5150 invested in this one. That's what I think I had and took out 66. Yeah, I had like yeah, I had like 5150 invested and got 66 bucks. So, I mean, was it a great night? Did I double my money? Did I did I make a bunch of cash? No. But it was profit. Seven contests, 24 entries, six lineups, $66. I entered 51 positive return. I'll take it. I'll take it anytime. I'm good. So, what we're going to be talking about, of course, we're going to go through and break down the games. Now, you know, we've got a 12, no, we've got a, uh, how many games are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah, 12 game slate all day. What made you go Harper over Cargo to stack Cargo and Blackman? You know what? Your guess is as good as mine. You know, I just wanted that stud. That's coming from Grayson E. Valdez, man. Dude does an awesome write-up, man. Check him out. He's a really, really solid cat. Yo, uh, I don't know. I should have been Cargo. Because we, we kind of talked about it. It would have made more sense for me to go Cargo Blackman to get that correlation. That was, that was my bad. That was my bad. A couple precursors. Uh, I cannot use RotoQL's projections. You see they have them here. Their own projections. That This is a paid service. So what I do use is the season average projection here. So you're not going to be getting any like you know free shit for anything. That's just what I'm going to be using because I like this template here. And we're going to be going through it and taking a look at the pitching. So I'm going to make sure that I've got the correct uh, stuff pulled up. Go to lineups. That was a very good question, uh, Gershon. And I should I, I, I should have went. I should have I should have stacked those those two spaces. I saved for like studs that I felt could keep me with the field if I needed to score a ton of points. And I really should have. I, I really should have you know stacked those guys. It, that should have that should have been you know uh, a stack from somewhere. That's what it should have been. So of course we got twelve games all day. We got six games in the early. I like that. Give me some of that six-game early swag, okay? Now, tomorrow's going to be tough when we get lives because I do have to go to an auction at 9 a.m. I'm going to a Mannheim auction, the illustrious Mannheim auction in Darlington, South Carolina, where I'll be bidding on some cars, trying to make a little cash, okay? And you've got also a four-game turbo at 105. That's pretty solid. The main slate is going to be the five games at 710. First pitch goes out. Then you've got three uh, night games at 810. So, Get it all in here. Make some lineups in there. Throw the bitches in the main and all day. You can definitely do that. If you like this three-game slate at 810, make lineups here. Throw them in that five-game uh, five game uh, main slate. You can definitely do that, okay? So, uh, and I'm going to keep this open for a simple fact, man. You know, a lot of times QL doesn't have the pitching updated properly. So I can go and check in by each game and make sure that I've got the right pitching here, okay? So let's do it. Let's go ahead and jump in. First game on the slate is going to be the Seattle Mariners and the Washington Nationals. Eight mile per hour wind going out towards center field. It's 81% humidity, 0% chance of rain, 70 degrees. This game should be good to go. 12:05. Gerson says Colorado is red hot and they ain't. They aren't even at cores yet. When they go back, the scores to break with internet. Haha, <laughs> I can take that. I can, and I'll be right there. I'll be right there waiting. Let's go over to DraftKings. Make sure that we have the right pitchers here. Uh, Gio Gonzalez, Ariel Miranda is what DraftKings is showing. Same thing here, so we are good to go. We got two lefties on the mound, okay? And I think maybe, maybe 
I was a day early on my Seattle Mariners spec. Now, I don't think that uh, that uh, your boy is on a DL. I don't think that that uh, uh, usually bats in a four hole for for Seattle. I don't think he's he's on the DL. I don't think so. I think he could be back tomorrow. But you know, Cano, Gamo, Segura, uh, these guys are going to be in play. So I'm not going to be on Gio Gonzalez tomorrow at 9.1. I think I'm going to take a shot. Again, I think it was a day early uh, uh, to that Seattle Mariners play. So I'm going to play some of those guys. I will not be playing uh, Gio Gonzalez. Uh, Aaron Miranda, fuck no. I'm not playing that dude. He's probably going to get mashed. This is a stackable game, in my opinion. No pitching from this game. Give me all the bats. I like that. No issue with that whatsoever. Okay. Next game we got is going to be the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Atlanta Braves. Uh, this is 13 mile per hour wind. Uh, the game is uh, in SunTrust, so we got 13 mile per hour wind going out toward right field. Uh, Zero percent chance of rain here. 69 degrees. 53 is going to be the dew point. Uh, you got Ivan Nova and Bartolo Colon. Let us check and make sure those are the correct pitchers that DraftKings has. Yes, that is correct. And you know what? I've I've been playing Nova a lot this year. Nine run total. Dexter Pope just joined us. Everybody say what's up to the homie Dexter Pope. Good to see you, fam. All right, so I've been playing Nova lately, man. Uh, and the last time I really got off on playing him, of course, was that game against the Miami uh, Marlins in Miami where he dropped 41.45. Hasn't been very great uh, since then. And I kind of think that the Atlanta Braves, man, they've kind of you know settled into the fact that they're not going to have Freddie Freeman. Like they, this, this team looks comfortable. Not, they're not okay with, with not playing with Freddie Freeman, but they seem like they're comfortable. They have you know reached a level of comfort with the fact that, yo, Freddie is not here. We got to go out there and we got to compete. And I like, uh, you know, I think I'm going to like some Atlanta bats tomorrow against uh, Ivan Nova. I, I, will, I, I can't play him. Now, he's cheap. 7.7 .7 is so cheap, and it looks appealing. It does look appealing, but I don't think I can get there. Bartolo Colon is a no for me, simply based off some of the BVP that we're going to be talking about later on in the show. When we uh, step into that realm, when we go to Switch Analytics, check out some of the BVP. Uh, Bartolo Colon is going to be a no for me in that spot, and I will like some of these Pittsburgh bats. I think we can get there again. I do. So, next game we're going to be talking about is the Kansas City Royals and the New York Mets. My, I mean, excuse me, my New York Yankees. We've got 12 mile per hour wind coming directly back toward the batter box. Uh, light rain, 95% humidity. Uh, excuse me, 69% chance of moderate rain. This game does have a possibility of delaying or raining out. So you want to curb your enthusiasm when it comes here. You, 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 you're going you're to want to curb your enthusiasm when it comes to, to who you're going to be playing here. Because this game does have that possibility of delaying or raining out. So so you might want to just, just think about that. Okay. Now you got Masahiro Tanaka at 8.9. Uh, I am always down to attack the Kansas City Royals. Especially with that wind coming in like that. If this game plays, I'm going to be on Masahiro Tanaka. Taking a look over his last few games. Negative uh, 4.45 against Tampa Bay. Aberration. Look at this here. 19, 13, 33, 24, 18. That's the Masahiro Tanaka that I think we're going to see tomorrow against the Kansas City Royals. And that's why uh, he will be a part of my lineups if this game does play. And, I, and that, that, that's what I like. That's who I like. Uh, Miguel Almonte, let's take a look on DraftKings, make sure that these are the correct guys uh, that we're going to be seeing. Yes, Miguel Almonte. Now, don't know much about uh, Almonte. We have to look at that a little bit further uh, into the day, but at 4.7K is a guy that's so cheap that you got to take a look at him. He's so cheap that you're going you're gonna to have to take a look at him, in my, in my opinion. I think you're going to have to take a look at him. He's just so cheap, okay? Uh Gonna, gonna like some of those, uh, the Yankee bats most definitely against them. Uh, after I do a little bit of research on them, I'm gonna take a look at some of these Yankee bats. I'm gonna like them. I know I am. I'm a Yankees guy. I like my Yankees. I think they can be a, a good place for tomorrow. Definitely. Next game we got is the Colorado Rockies. Well, uh, uh, well let's take a look. Let's, let's, let's go back and take a look because, you know, I want you to see exactly why. You know, take a look at uh, Tanaka. So we, we take a look at the Kansas City Royals, where they rank as far as K rate. And they are 18th in the league with a 20.6% K rate. That is fairly disciplined at the mile. But the 143 ISO and that 290, excuse me, 288 Woba is what really gives me uh, a, a pause for concern and make me want to play Tanaka against those cats. 
because I don't see them. I don't see them hitting them hard. I really don't. I mean, that, that that's a below average ISO, man. And and ISO really speaks to you know the propensity for extra base hits. You don't see the Kansas City Royals do that much, uh, and that leads to runs. So I think that Tanaka can be a very solid play on on the slate. I like him. And then there's another guy that we're going to talk about as far as pitching goes that you can pair with Tanaka, and I think still be in a good spot. Yeah. So uh, next game we got is the Colorado Rockies and the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It has been a, 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 in this series, we got Tyler Anderson, Vince Velasquez. In this series for me, it has been a long running thing for me. Are you saying roster? No, I'm saying play Tanaka. I'm saying that the Kansas City Royals, uh, while they do not strike out among the top in the league, they're not like a, a way above 20% K rate. The, the ISO and the Wobas are low. The ISO was at one uh, 141, which is very low. The Woba is under 300. So that means they're not gonna, if they do get hits, they're not going to hit a, a bunch of extra base hits. I think uh, Tanaka can keep them keep the scoring down and, and, and have a good game. I like Tanaka. That's where I'm at. Now, uh, it's been a long-running thing in this specific series between the Rockies and the Phillies. I'm going to tell you something. The Rockies have become synonymous with home runs, big hits, uh, uh, just smoking line drives or home runs, knocking out the park. That's all everybody thinks about when you think about the Colorado Rockies. But if you look at their pitching rotation this year, they have one of the better, the better young pitching rotations in the league, man. These guys have been pitching lights out in a lot of spots. So uh, Tyler Anderson, I'm still going to pick on the Phillies, even though they're at home where they do hit better. I'm still going to pick on the Phillies with Tyler Anderson. The number one thing I know is going to happen is they're going to get run support. So you're, you're probably going to get the win from Tyler Anderson if he goes five, six innings. You're going to get that. So that's the guy that I like. That's why I like Chatwood today. Same thing goes uh, of, of, uh, against against the Phillies with Tyler Anderson tomorrow. Let's open him up and take a look. Well, see, he's better than Chatwood, actually. Over the last three games, 23, 18.5, 31.3. Very solid floor over the last three games. And this is against some power-hitting teams. You look at against Cincinnati, against the Dodgers, against Arizona. Really solid shit, bro. Really solid shit. So, yo, he's the front runner for me. Like, I like Tyler Anderson tomorrow. I really do. Vince Velasquez, no. I'm not playing a pitcher against uh, the Colorado Rockies. Aaron Altia versus Anderson coming from uh, Gerson Valdez. There must be some BVP narrative there we got to take a look at, which we will do that in just a moment. But I'm going to open it up, take a look a little bit. Uh, what we're talking about is where the Phillies rank as far as K rate. They are 11th in the league. That's I like that. That's attackable. 22% K rate for the Phillies. 163 ISO. 165 and above is where I want to be. 163, yes, I can I can play them. I mean, excuse me, I can attack them. 313 Woba. That's decent, but it's not enough for me to be be afraid of playing a pitcher against the Phillies, just like I wasn't yesterday with Chatwood. Give me uh, give me some Tyler Anderson against these against these Philadelphia Phillies. I am all about that. Okay. Next game we got is going to be the oh, and let me highlight them so that so that you know at the end when we go back and recap, you can see the guys that I like. I like so far I like Tim. I liked um, Tanaka. I've got uh, Bartolo as somebody who's going to be a Shelly candidate. People are going to love Ivan Nova. That's why I'm going to be playing uh, some of those Atlanta bats. People are going to like him. And I, of course, I don't like either of these pitchers in Washington. Okay, so moving to on to the next game. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. I was a little bit wrong about the Rays. I was wrong about the Rays. Now, I did play, uh, Kobe, I did like Kobe Rasmus. That's the guy that I did like. Uh, but, yo, Souza going out uh, and having a great game. I think did he, did he hit two jacks? Souza went ham. Yo, the, 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 the Tampa Bay Rays were good. And if you were on them and you let me talk you off of them, my bad. I just didn't like them. I didn't like the spot. I felt like it was a trap. If I can take credit for the good plays, I'm going to take, for my good calls, I'm going to take credit for the bad ones too, okay? So, um, taking a look at the Tampa Bay Rays here, we've got uh, eight and a half run total. Matt Andreezy on the mound uh, for the Rays and Alex Meyer uh, for the, the, the Angels. Let's, let's go to DraftKings and make sure that we've got that uh, locked in. See, DraftKings has Daniel Wright. It has Daniel Wright and Matt Andreezy. So, something needs to be corrected here. Something needs to be corrected here. I hate I hate when that happens. Something needs to be corrected here. But I don't like that picture anyway. 
Andreezy, I think I can get behind Andreezy. My one trepidation would, of course, be Mike Trout. But I think, you know, outside of him and Maben, and, and, and yo, and this Pujols is a thing right now. Yeah, oh, Rudy Hunter says uh, Souza was a PvP player. I missed it. Uh, yo, the, uh, th there's a narrative circulating with Abba Pujols. The dude is getting very, very close. Okay, Meyer was put on the, on the DL today. Meyer's going to DL, so, okay, that's the guy that's going to be pitching. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be Daniel Wright. It's going to be pitching. So let's look at it. Okay. This is the guy that's going to be pitching. And he's not good. <laughs> he is not good. <laughs> he is not good. So Daniel Wright's going to be pitching there. And uh, a narrative is circulating about Albert Pujols, man. This dude is very close to 600. And, you know, I, you know a lot of people are going to wait till he gets 599 to play him. But guess what? To get to 599, to get to 600, He's gonna have to hit that that 598. That you know what I'm saying. So I think now's the time to, to sort of, if you catch him in a matchup that you kind of like Pujols in, go ahead and play him because this is a major thing. It's a big deal. He's gonna get 600 home runs uh, soon this season before the All Star break. He is. So he's a guy that you can look to. Okay, because nobody's been playing him when he's been hitting all these every all these home runs at 590 and above. Nobody's been playing him. Nobody's been playing him. Just open up, and take a look real quick, and. Uh, Because all he's doing is he's hitting jacks. He's hitting like one jack every few games. You know, against the White Sox, bam, 14, bam, against Cotton, bam, uh, 14 against uh, Keiko. He hit a jack there. He hit one against Paxton. You know what I mean? So he's not he's not old school Pujols, but he's he's hitting jacks every few games. So keep an eye on him. Okay? Uh, Andreezy is a guy that I kind of like at 7.5. I think I can get behind that. Eight and a half run total. Ah, I think I, I think I can get there. I wouldn't have an issue in that spot, right? Next game we're talking about is going to be the San Francisco Giants and the Chicago Cubs. 14-mile-per-hour uh, win, man. This time it's going out toward shallow right field right there uh, uh, behind first base. You've got Eddie Butler at 5.7 and Jeff Samarja at 9.8. Let us go to DraftKings just to be sure that these are the guys that are going to be in. Butler, Samarja, yes. Now, Samarja had a really nice one his last time out. 30.4 fan uh, DraftKings points, 23, 15, 38. So the last four games have been fairly solid for him. The last four games have been fairly solid. And, you know, I can guarantee you against the Cubs, the ownership is going to be very low. Now, I'm going to wait until a little bit more about the over-under and the lines come out to make a definitive uh, move when it comes to Samarja. He's a guy that I really don't love rostering. But look at Eddie Butler at 5.7. Negative 6.48 the last time out. Against St. Louis, 14.81. Now, he's going to get run support, which is something that Samarja may not get. So maybe you might, might want to take a look at him, just to be sure. You might want to take a look at him. Of course, you're going to play. You, you, of course, you can play some of those uh, Chicago bats. They're hot. They've been hitting really well. You saw Rizzo. I think he went yarding twice uh, yesterday. That's all good. No issue there. Uh, but as far as Samarja goes, we have to take a, look, a closer look at that uh, throughout the day and see what he ha – have they played the Cubs uh, yet this year? What has he done? And I'm also going to check some BVP stuff to see. This is the, his first time facing the Cubs this season. So I'm going to check out some BVP stuff as well. All right, so the next game we got is going to be the Cincinnati Reds and the Cleveland Indians here. Uh, as you can see, man, Cleveland Indians is a big favorite to win this game. Very big favorite to win this game. And uh, you might you might want to roll with that too, uh, because you got 96% humidity here, a 73% chance of moderate rain. This is a game that is in danger of not even playing. This game is in danger of not even playing. Nine and a half run total, which is fairly high. Uh, you've got Tim Adelman and Mike Clevenger be going to DraftKings just to make sure these are the guys that are going to be playing. Adam Clevenger. Clevenger has been pretty good lately, man. Over his last few starts, opening him up. 7.8. I loved him when he was cheap. Uh, 22.92. I was off of him here at home against Minnesota when he got that negative 5, but I did play him against Kansas City that first game, 14.62. Dude has decent stuff. He does. He does that, he does that, he does that decent stuff. Do I want to play him against, you know, uh, a, kind of a small ball roster that could go out and hit for power like, uh, like the Reds? Probably not. Probably not. I think I would like some Reds in the spot. I really do. 
uh, Tim Adelman 6.1, take a look at him and what he's been doing over the last few, not good at all. So this means that the Cleveland Indians will be squarely in play for us tomorrow if this game does play. Because, of course, uh, you've got to understand that there's a, a, there's a very good chance this game, is, this game won't even play. The very good chance this game won't even play. So you want to you stay abreast of that uh, as the day goes on. Uh, holla at your boy, Kevin Roth. Does some really good weather stuff. Follow him on Twitter. He's always available. Josh Dewey just got in the, in the spot. What's happening, big homie? Good to see you, fam. Next game, we got Texas Rangers and the Boston Red Sox. Uh, we got 10 mile per hour win coming directly back toward the batter box. A nine run total. I kind of like that. 57% uh, chance of light rain this is another game that has a possibility of delaying or raining out. 55 degrees, 98% humidity here. Uh, let's go to DraftKings and make sure that Nick Martinez and Drew Pomerantz are going to be on the mound for both of these teams. Uh, here we go. Bam, that's, that's, that is correct so far coming from DraftKings. So, uh, Nick Martinez, man, 5.7. Uh, I think I did play on the last time out, and he got 19.65 points, and that's that's beautiful. Doing that at 4.8K against Detroit, but do I want to play him against the Bo Sox? Probably not. If this game plays, he's not a, a guy that I, I'm going to like. Now, Drew Pomerantz, on the other hand, I think is in consideration. Looking over his last uh, few games, 14, 5.15, negative 4.4, uh, 4, 21, 22. His best start of the season was the first game he played against Baltimore, 24.5. I can kind of look to Drew Pomeranz in this spot. I think I like Pomeranz here. I think I, I think I still like I think I like Pomeranz in the spot. I really do. And, and also against Nick Martinez, man, you can give me a few of those Boston bats as well. So I, I like I like this. I, I don't have an issue with Pomeranz. He's another guy that I can check off, uh, drop him on the list, put him in my my pit my pitcher player pool. Okay. Next game we got the San Diego Padres. And the New York Mets, of course, there needs to be no discussion here. No discussion here. DeGrom is playable. Most certainly playable. Thor is, that's in DeGrom, excuse me. Jake DeGrom is definitely uh, playable in this spot. Against the Padres, you know, what better way to pick on a team than to pick on the Padres, who, if you take a look at what they do as far as uh, K rate, they are 24.24% uh, K rate. That's, that's good for the third worst team in the league when it comes to K rate. You look at the ISO form. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, look at the team ISO for the for the for the Padres. Twenty first and and ISO one fifty two. Not good. Okay. Look at the, the team Woba two eighty six. Not good. So we can definitely go to Degrom. And as we talked about earlier, you look at maybe pairing Degrom with 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 one of the other guys like uh like uh, Tyler Anderson. That could be good. A guy you know is going to get run support, right? Uh, Denilson Lamette, no, I, I I can't do it. I mean, I'm sure uh, some of you guys uh, that dig a little bit deeper, you dig a little bit deeper into the minor league stuff, you know, and you know guy, you know about guys, you can definitely do that. But yo, I, I'm going to be on Degrom most certainly. Degrom is a guy that I do like. Conforto, uh, balling out. He's uh, above 5K now. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, and the fact that I like DeGrom so much, I'm probably, this is not one of those underdog stacks I'm going to look to play. I'm not going to play San Diego guys. I'm, I'm going to play DeGrom or I'm not going to play DeGrom. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, because a lot of times I tell you, if you're not going to play a guy, then you should attack him. DeGrom is not the type of motherfucker to attack. If you're not going to play him, just don't play him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest attacking DeGrom in the spot. I really wouldn't. But, of course, against uh, Lamette. You can play damn near any collection of Mets guys you like. I think it's going to be a very popular stack tomorrow when they see how bad uh, the limit is going to be. Clevenger in a pitcher's park. Can I get lucky again? I'm going to try it, bro. That's coming from Tone Loke. I am going to try it. I, 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 I'm going to try it. You know, I, I, I hate to play him against the Reds, but I think I'm going to try it. Just because, I, you know, a couple of starts this year when I've been on him, he's, he's done well. So I, 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 might, I might try it. This game we got is the Detroit uh, Tigers and the Houston Astros. Uh, this is a nine-run total again. We got Mike Fires and Justin Verlander uh, here. So let's take a look and make sure on DraftKings we've got the correct uh, pitching prospects here. Yeah, okay, Verlander and Fires, good. We're good to go there. Uh, yo, Verlander, man. Verlander has been a riddle wrapped in an enigma. 
this year. Because if you look at these games, look at these games, 27, 20, 19, 12, 20. I, you know, I guarantee you, all of these games, he was up and ready and in position to score 30 DraftKings points. Verlander has been in position to score 30 DraftKings points so many times this year. And that sixth, that seventh inning, he just gives up three, four, five runs. That pissed me off. Robinson Cano uh, getting robbed by Michael Taylor from that home run. That's what ruined my Seattle stand. But, um, yeah. I mean, Verlander. Ver, uh, yo, Ver, he, Ver, he pitches so well for a small window of time. I mean, five, six, seven, eight innings, he is good to go. And then before you know it, five, six, seven innings, he's good to go. Then he, before you know it, before he sits down, like he, he never like pitches a great game and sits down. Like he gets knocked out of the game. All of these games where he's scoring, you know, 20 points or more, these are games that he's been pitching very well in and gets knocked out in that last inning. And that's very tough. That's very tough. Very tough. Now against Houston, ah, uh, I don't think I don't think that yo he he falls apart late, bro. That's true. That's coming from Josh Dewey, man. He does. But I still kind of like him. I still kind of like Verlander in the spot, yo. And it's funny because I let everybody talk me off of a Detroit Tiger stack. Now and 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 to be fair, to be fair, everybody in the shop was like, yo, I don't think you should play the Tiger stack simply because. Uh, the, the two, two of the best hitters are going to be out. You know, the guy that has been balling out for him, J.D. Martinez is not playing. Then you got Castellanos is going to be out. I don't know where the runs are going to come from, but I still liked him. I still liked him. I didn't play him. I didn't play him. I listened, I listened to the people around me. I didn't play him. But I also didn't listen to y'all when y'all told me to play Rendon. So if I take credit for the positive, I got to I got to I got to be keep it real because y'all was like, yo, Rendon, Rendon, and I didn't play him. And y'all were like, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. And I didn't play them either. So, there it is. Yo, yo, how shocked were we? We thought, yo, we was in the shop. All of us were like, we were, we were, you know, kicking it. And we were like, yo, Chatwood is going to be super chopped. People were like, yo, people, everybody knew he was a good player. We all liked Chatwood. But then once we started to, 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 to look around and see that everybody was, was talking about, uh, everybody was talking about uh, Chatwood, some of us was like, man, uh, man, he's probably gonna be high owned. Ah, nah, nah. I'm thinking about fading just because he's high owned. Maybe I can, you know, pivot over to Morton. And I was like, no, don't, F don't. And the dude was only 11% owned in most tournaments. So I think we stole something there. Anybody that had chat with in the shop, I think we stole the bacon. I really think we did. So that was awesome, man. And that's why it's important to be in here with us, bro, because you're gonna get those plays. So Mike Fires is bad, and I think you can play some Detroit Tigers. Most certainly, looking over his last few games, uh, 13, 15, 6.45, 16.7. So it's all good. It's all good. Pat Webb, what's happening, big homie? Good to see you, man. So, yeah, I'm not going to be on Fires uh, tomorrow, but I do want to take a look at, at some of those Houston, because I believe Houston is one of the more disciplined teams at the plate in respect to, you know, uh, K rates and and have, have solid mobile, mobile and ISO guys. So looking at where they are, I don't, I don't think they strike out much. Yeah, they strike out 18.9%. Uh, and that's like the second best in the league behind the Red Sox. So if you're looking for strikeouts, Houston Astros are not the right team to target if you're looking for strikeouts, which is what we really want when it comes to our pitching. That's the one thing that's gonna that's gonna kind of take me uh, take me uh, uh, we're gonna make sure that Verlander is a guy that I'm gonna I'm gonna curb my enthusiasm with. But when you when you look at him over here though, as far as the Wobas and the ISOs, bro, you you see him here, uh, 340 uh, 334 Wobas, seventh in the league, good for seventh in the league. Uh, and also Altuve has a BVP, good 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 uh, BVP there. So check out the team ISO as well. They should be up there uh, in ISO, 11th in the league with a 174 ISO. That is decent. Good for 11th in the league. So you can you can target some of those bats if you like. In my opinion, I think either... Okay, Verinder is that guy to me. Verinder is that guy to me. On, on today's slate, if you are not playing Verlander, you should have some Houston exposure. If you're not playing Verlander, you should have some Houston exposure. The guru has spoken. Take it and run with it, baby. Take it and run with it. Next game we got is going to be the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm surprised this is a nine-game total, but then when I take a look at Robbie Ray, I see why we've got uh, a nine-run total. It's not a huge total here. 
you know, you, you think Diamondbacks, you think Brewers, you think the two best, uh, some of the two highest ISO teams in the league. Both teams hit for a ton of extra bases. They both have very prolific style of offenses. So, so yo, let's take a look at Robbie Ray because I think this is the guy that pitches a lot better away than he does at home. Looking at Robbie Ray away, going to San Diego, 30.25. At home, negative one. At home, 11.25. Away, 26.5. Home 22, home 11, away 27, away 29. So when this dude gets away from Chase Field, he is good to go, okay? And yeah, and, I, and oh, it's bubbling here. It's bubbling, it's cooking, and it's brewing. Milwaukee brewing here, baby. It's brewing here. God damn it, give me some of that Robbie Ray. Pour him on me, baby. I said it. I said it. Give me some of that Robbie Ray. Pull him on me, baby. I will be playing him tonight. Most certainly. I like Robbie Ray in this spot. That's where I want to go. I like Robbie Ray. So, uh, Zach Davies is a no for me. Milwaukee, of course, as Jeremy Ladd just stated, Milwaukee is a hitter's park. Uh, but, but, we're talking about a team. Uh, we're talking about a team. Uh-oh. It says, uh, the Brewers Park... The Brewers Park plays closer to his home than any uh, anywhere but course. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But I, this is what I love about it. This is what this is what puts me on them. Let's let's take a look at where they are, man. The Brewers, 24.3% K rate. This is one of the highest K rates in the league, second behind the Rays. Now they do have a very high ISO, 198, and the team Woba is 337, which is pretty good too. But the one thing about it is, the one thing about it is, yo. I like the lefty lefty matchups. I like that, and, and we can look and talk. We can look at it a little bit closer and see exactly what they are and what they've been. But I, I like Robbie Ray in the spot. That's a guy I can. I'm gonna have exposure to, and I definitely think he's gonna be low owned. I don't think people are gonna be on Robbie Ray, which matters on, on that and that uh, the seven the five game May. That's gonna matter. I like him. Give me some of that. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all good with a little bit of Robbie Ray tomorrow today excuse me uh if you are not down with me you can definitely take a, a shot at some of these bats here you know i you know I, is, is thames a lefty masher ha, where has thames been have we seen Thames? vr 4.7 man you know what i mean i like goldie and them but I, I i love robbie ray i'm good on that give me some of that take like a zach davies over his last few games 15 5.2 22 against pittsburgh 23 his best start of the season against Cincinnati. Uh, no, not playing him against Arizona. The Brewers have been super cold lately. The Ks will be there, but I'd be nervous about a breakout performance. I can think that. Level-headed. You know, you know, Josh Dewey is always the voice of reason in the show. That's why we, that's why we, keep, we, we let him stick around. That's my dude. That's my dude. So, the last game on the slate is going to be the St. Louis Cardinals and the L.A. Dodgers. Uh, it shows to me that we have Michael Walker as well as uh, Kenta Maeda. Let's go over to DraftKings, check on that, and make sure that is the correct uh, pitchers that we do have. Maeda, Waka, yes, we can go there. All right, so, yo, I was heavy on St. Louis tonight, uh, at, last night. And, you know, I, I, of course, I put the poll out on Twitter. You saw that, and I'm going to do it again. And inside of that is going to be a sneaky stack that I like that I don't think everyone else is going to like. And I'm going to just see... I'm going to gauge the temperature in the room and see what everybody else likes. And that's where I know where my ownership is going to be. I did it tonight, and I guarantee you I had the St. Louis stack at less than 3% owned. I'm talking about 1 through 5. Got the Molina Jack. Uh, decent game from Jorko. Decent game. Uh, Fowler didn't do much, but it was all good. It was all good. So, uh, Michael Walker, 8.2 against the Dodgers. We know the Dodgers can mash against righties when, they get, when, they, when, they, when they're feeling it. Um, seven and a half run total. That's not much. He's been fairly consistent in all of his starts this year. Has never scored less than ten uh, uh, fantasy points this year. So Waka does deserve some consideration in this spot. At Eight point two. I can dig it. I can. Uh, Kenta Maeda is a guy at eight point eight that I'm not really in love with. But over his last three starts, man, very solid. Twenty five point seven five, twenty one point six five, twenty eight point five one five. And these bad games came in the beginning of the season. 
but it was kind of against some tough uh, tough competition. You look at that Colorado, Arizona twice. That was kind of tough. Oh yeah, Randall DFS says that the the Cardinals bats have been better on the road. The Cardinals bats have been better on the road outside of Dexter Fowler. That is. So I think you can get exposure uh, to either pitcher in this spot if you like. But me, I would more so go toward you know playing Michael. Uh, excuse me, playing uh playing Maeda against some of the Cardinals guys, and then you know uh, uh, attacking Walker with, with some of those lefties because I think they're gonna want to get some get back after what happened last night. Maeda is attackable. That's coming from Josh Dewey. Beautiful. So now that we've gone through and breaking down the entirety of the slate, we went all the way from A to Z, from Seattle all the way to me, from Washington all the way to the Dodgers, to L.A. Let's go ahead and take a look at some BVP matchups that may give us a leg up and, and get us to start uh, in our roster builds, okay? And we're going to switch analytics to check this out. You can also do this yourself. All right, so we've got one thing that kind of stands out to us is going to be Andrew McCutcheon against Bartolo Colon. Uh, 12 at-bats here, batting 417. Uh, no homers, but he did only struck out against him twice. Has got two walks. That does have potential. We've got uh, Mookie Betts against Nick Martinez. He's batting 400 there uh, with one strikeout. Only 10, uh, 10 uh, attempts. So we, we want a little bit more than that. We got Nick Markakis against Ivan Nova batting 342. I like that. One jack, four strikeouts, and four walks. That's something that you can take a look at. Okay. Uh, we've got Josh Harrison against Bartolo Colon. This is looking like somewhat of a, a kind of a Pittsburgh stack, batting 364 with two strikeouts, no walks, no jacks, but he's been getting on base. I kind of like that. We've got, and I'm, look, I'm looking for a heavy BVP, man. Not just like some little bullshit, but I'm looking for some heavy BVP. Pedroia against Nick Martinez. 10, 10, at, 10 plate appearances, 9 at bats, uh, a, a strikeout, and also a walk there. We've got. Carlos Ruiz, the catcher against Gio Gonzalez, batting 267 with two home runs. That's a, that's going to be a cheap play. That's going to be a pretty cheap play there. We got Brandon Phillips against Ivan Noah, batting 278 with two jacks. That's something you can take a look at. Yeah, Handy Ramirez is a very short sample size. He does have a solid BVP. We're going to go to the shorter ones in just a second. Jason Hayward against Samarja, 214. Ah, got a home run against him. Six strikeouts. That's a lot of strikeouts against him. So let's go and, and, and check out the home run total and see, you know, who's been smacking the ball around the yard on who, right? Uh, Ruiz, Phillips, Hanley against Nick Martinez, 667 and 9, oh, excuse me, 6 at-bats. Uh, you've got Lorenzo Kane hit a couple against Masahiro Tanaka. Yasmani against Waka hit one. Cargo against Velasquez is somebody you might want to take a look at. Betting 500. Segura. He said your boy Segura. I like Segura though. That's my dude. I like Segura. That's right. JD against Mike. My Mike Fires looks good if JD plays. So not. I mean, there's, there's no overwhelming BVP stuff, but you can look at this one. A, a negative BVP for Jake Degrom against Will Myers. Will can't hit him. So, uh, really, really solid stuff, man. I like that Marquez though. Give me some of that Marquez against uh, Nova. I'm gonna be going there, definitely. I said it in the main line the other day. BVP is getting out of hand. Got to be at least 15 plus at best to mean anything. Oh, y you definitely want a larger sample size, definitely. You definitely want a larger sample, size. especially if the two players in question have been in the league for a long time. If we're looking at two guys that's been in the league six, seven, eight years, and the BVP is at six at best, seven at best, that doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? But if you got, you know, if you got a guy that's only been playing for a couple of years and he's got ten at bats against a guy, then that's that's kind of that's a telltale sign. Hernan Perez coming from Reg Kelly, so really really solid stuff to look at, man. Uh, you know, in the first class, what we want to do is kind of exemplify pitching, get those prospects. I want you to create a pool of pitchers in your head that you really want to uh, rock with. I'm gonna go to it. Right now, these are some targets that I got, guys that I liked, of course. And they're not all going to be high dollar guys. Some are going to be cheap. So, DeGrom, Tanaka, Tyler Anderson, Robbie Ray, and Drew Pomeranz. Those are going to be the guys that I like the most. 
And I also got to give some concern, a consideration to Matt Andreezy in this spot. 10 at bats is my cutoff. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. I like larger sample size unless dude has two or three jacks in 10 at bats. <laughs> and, 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 and look at how long the guy's been playing. You got to look at that, too. You got to look at that, too. So, of course, this has been your DFS Jerusalem. You can follow me, of course, on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. Uh, signing off. And I want you to go ahead, man, make you some lineups. Uh, don't forget to do that. Make lineups in the turbo, still the bitch in the main, and always, always keep it 300.